Learned yesterday that AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine showed 82% effectiveness with a three-month gap between shots. The vaccine may also significantly reduce transmission of the virus, potentially helping speed up the process of achieving herd immunity. So what does this all mean for the global vaccination efforts and our attempts to get past this global pandemic? Dr. Amish Adalja is senior scholar for the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, and he joins me now. Dr. Adalja, it's always great when you join us. Thanks so much for, for being here. I want to talk about this new data that we learned yesterday about the Astra shot. How significant is it, and, and what stands out to you the most when it comes to this data dump? I think it's very significant because what we had heard is we knew that these vaccines are very, very effective at preventing serious disease, preventing hospitalization, and preventing death. But we really wanted to know, will they decrease the spread? And most of us in the field thought that that was going to be the case because of how effective they were and what we, in the early data that we've seen, for example, in places like Israel. So I think this really shows that these vaccines not only prevent serious disease, but they're also going to decrease spread. And these are going to be the solution out of this pandemic. And I think it's important to know that because a lot of people were, were worried that after I get the vaccine, am I never going to be able to do anything normally? And I think this is a, a sign of hope. And I think that the other vaccines will likely have data uh, that's, that has a very similar finding as well. Is this the only vaccine where we have findings similar to this? Like, do we know in terms of Moderna and the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine if, if you can still spread or to what extent you could still spread the coronavirus after being vaccinated? We have limited data from the Moderna vaccine, and there are studies going on, but they do show that in, when you look, you'll find that they decrease spread. And you have to remember that these trials and this whole vaccine was developed not really to decrease spread, but to decrease hospitalization and decrease death and to be able to protect the most vulnerable populations from the most serious consequences of this disease. So that's really what this vaccine program has been, and that's reflected in the priority groups, nursing home, residents, the elderly, for example. But I do think you're going to see added benefits in terms of spread as well. But you have to remember that this virus isn't going to go anywhere. Coronaviruses don't disappear from the human population, especially if they efficiently transmit. And we have four coronaviruses that cause 25 percent of our common colds, and this is likely going to be the fifth seasonal coronavirus. But but it will cease to be a public health emergency once we get our vulnerable populations vaccinated. Uh, timeline for that, Dr. Adalja, what do you think? I think in the best case scenario, we're looking probably into late summer before we cross that herd immunity threshold. But remember, we're gonna see benefits before that. As people, uh, for example, get vaccinated and they're less likely to need hospitalization at that, that's gonna change the risk perception. You won't see hospitals worrying about capacity, for, capacity concerns, for example. They won't have to cancel thyroid surgeries, for example. All of that will change once we get our vulnerable populations vaccinated. Um, I, I want to ask about where we are in terms of our understanding of the various variants that are out there right now and to what extent the vaccines that have been approved or are uh, perhaps will be approved soon by emergency use authorization protect against those new variants. Well, what we know is that the vaccines that have been put up against the variants, the UK variant seems to be something that the vaccines can handle. The South African variant is a little bit more questionable, but I want to emphasize the fact that when you look at serious disease, hospitalization and death, those are the things that matter to all of us in the field, not mild disease. The vaccines do hold up well, even against the South African variant, which means that maybe the current vaccines, you still get infected and you might have symptomatic disease, but you are not likely to die or need hospitalization, which is a win because these are vaccines going up against a variant that's kind of evolved to evade the immune response. So I do think that this is good news, that our vaccines are very effective at preventing what matters, deaths and hospitalizations. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.